In the previous videos, we saw three different categories of someone who has a healthy mouth. Now let's look at three different categories of someone who has gingivitis. And remember, gingivitis is inflammation of the gums, and the reason why the gums are inflamed is possibly because of plaque. That's what we call plaque-induced gingivitis. This person has plaque all around their mouth, they're not doing a good job cleaning their mouth, and so this person would have inflamed gums or gingivitis. So three categories that could happen, let's look at each one of them. First one is plaque-induced gingivitis on an intact periodontium. So this is the regular thing that you might uh, see. You might see clients who have gingivitis, who have inflammation. You can see some bleeding, some redness. But if you look at the radiographs, their bone level is intact. They haven't lost any bone. So this is someone who has gingivitis and they have an intact periodontium. So we would call this person a gingivitis client, a client with gingivitis. Here, we see gingivitis on a reduced periodontium in a non-perio client. So what does that mean? Well, here we do see some recession, right? We do see some recession, but that's why we can say that this person has reduced periodontium because we do see recession, especially here in the canine, we do see some recession. But the reason why the recession is there is possibly because of a, um, maybe they had ortho before and sometimes when you have braces it can cause some recession because look at the bone look at their bone level it's intact it's intact so yes there is recession but if you look at this um the bone level it's intact so here we see gingivitis here we do see inflammation there is inflammation so we would say this person has gingivitis we cannot say this person has periodontitis because when we look at the bone, the bone has not resorbed, the bone has not gone down. So this person does not have periodontitis. This person has gingivitis. But what might throw you off is that they have recession. Why do they have recession? Well, the reason why they have recession is when you ask them, when you get their history, they might say that they had braces and braces or ortho can cause recession. So this person fits in this category over here where they do have gingivitis, but it's on a reduced periodontium. We can see the recession is present. And this is a non-perio patient. This is a client who does not have bone loss. So this is the best fit category or classification for this kind of client. Lastly, the last thing I want to show you is a different category under gingivitis, which is called gingivitis on a reduced periodontium in a successfully treated periodontitis patient. Again, a mouthful, I know. What I want you to pay attention to is look at this over here. See how they have bone loss? So this person has bone loss. The bone level should be over here. The bone has gone down and reserved to over here. So this is a periodontal patient, right? This is a periodontal patient because they had periodontitis before, but it's a stable periodontal patient. And how do I know it's stable? Because um, perhaps I was monitoring this client for a long period of time for so many years and I noted that the bone level stayed here and it did not get worse. So over some time I noticed that this was uh, a patient whose bone level is stable. So this person is considered someone who has gingivitis because I do see some bleeding. So this person does have gingivitis and I do see inflammation and you can see the gums are rolled almost festooned over here. But this person has um, their, their bone level is not getting any worse, it's stable. So with this client, I would call them a client that has gingivitis, but it's on a reduced periodontium because we do see recession, we, see, we do see bone loss. So it's on a reduced periodontium in a successfully treated, so in a previously treated periodontal patient. This patient was treated before with periodontitis and is now stable.